Welcome to the Global Discussion, a discussion with creatives, leaders and thinkers. My name is Simon Hodgkin. Today, it is a pleasure and a delight to be joined by the exceptionally talented Chris Gore. Chris, you're very welcome to the show. Let's begin by asking you to introduce yourself. Tell us a bit about your wonderful world to our international audience. Over to you, Chris. Uh, hello, uh, I'm uh, Chris, and along with my wife, we run this thing called The Studio, which is an online space to help entrepreneurs build their personal brand through social media and video. And our goal is to unlock wealth and freedom so good people can do good things. But that's really the community started from just an experiment, really. I was I'm a freelance camera supervisor I've been doing that for 20 odd years. And it came to the point where at the end of every month, I would be searching around for work going, oh, this, what's coming in next month? And I also got a, a creative agency in Nottingham and the, those things sort of meld together. But still, I seem to be running to try and keep still just paying the bills. And I just wanted to try something different. And I thought I've tried social media before, but it, I, I've done what everyone does and try it for a bit and then stop on it. What would happen if I tried posting on social media every day for a year, no crazy agenda, just turn up every weekday, put something out there and just see what happens. So I started doing that and I thought naively that everyone would want just a piece of my skills as a camera supervisor and they'd be asking all camera questions and the studio was launched in june with a few beta testing people and the majority of it is just trying to get people out of their own head and actually posting and actually thinking about what their customer wants uh, so it's heading more down the the personal branding and just getting people to just start and just do it because it's really powerful like social media is just incredible but the more you look into the people who are successful the only thing they say is that they've been doing it for a long time so i just want to try and get well ideally you know, the big picture is to try and get a million people to have a better life by just posting getting out there and stop being inside their heads well, that's a great introduction. There's lots to dive into there, but I want to I want to go back in time a little bit, if I can, because yeah. I, I know you studied communications and media studies, right, at university, and then not just a cam any camera supervisor. You work with the BBC, you 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 know Glastonbury, all the big stuff, right? So you're no stranger to being that side of the camera and what it takes. But I wanted to roll back and just say, where did that come from? Was it something in the family? Was it something you wanted to do? Was it just, I had no idea what I wanted to do, so I just fell into it. Where did that come from originally? I think it came from watching TV as a kid. It was, I think I was around 13. I lived in rural Lincolnshire, and I was like, I want to be a cameraman. And then I started to look up in those days before the internet, how could you become a camera operator? And there wasn't any TV stations there. So it's like, okay, now you should help wedding photographers and do wedding videos and then go to university and study media studies. But when you get to the media studies places, you realize how much of that is taught by people who don't quite know what they're doing. I mean, there's obviously a lot of people doing good things, but the people that I taught with, they were analyzing EastEnders down to the nth degree, going that this shot is for this particular purpose. And then when you actually get down to it and work in EastEnders, that shot is because they need to get something to cut between the other one so they can all get off and go home. So my world is sort of eminently practical, just trying to get some things done. And that was the thing that I learned early days that you, I had a goal in mind that I wanted to work for the Beeb and I just took those tiny little steps and that's the thing that I'm sort of recreating on this journey that I've been on for the last uh, 20 months. Yeah. And working for the Beeb, the BBC for our international viewers, it, I mean, that's no mean feat. And I know as a freelance as well, uh, as a broadcast camera supervisor, you've done that for what, three decades, maybe at this stage. Yeah. I joined the BBC in 1997 Yeah, and 
think my first Glastonbury was 99 and I've been supervising the pyramid stage there since 2008. And I've, I've just been very lucky to go to some amazing places. Like, so I've done a lot of Royal weddings. I shot Kirsty Young's final piece when we did a piece of camera for the Queen's funeral. So I've been at a lot of amazing places and I've been at the end of the hundred meters when Usain Bolt broke the world record in Beijing. But the the world of camera operating is quite weird because it's quite a small niche and it's probably one of the only businesses where no one markets themselves. Like it's a small business where you just sit at home and wait for the phone to ring. And if it's a quiet year, you just go turn up at work and you'll have the conversations where people are going, it's a quiet year. But what other business would you sit there and do nothing about it? So I've got that drive to go, well, I must do something. So, yeah, hence my you're just, multiple You're just careers. waiting for Liam and Noel to ring and say, listen, we've got the band back together. We might <laughs> need you, Chris, right? You never know. Well, I did. I, I shot them at Glastonbury. I imagine you did, yeah. And I remember Liam, when Noel was singing a num slower number, came around the back and was just like, all right, how's it going? I'm trying to hold my camera and shoot the drums. And what do you do at that point? Yeah, very surreal. But yeah, I'm waiting Brilliant. for the call. Brilliant. And look, I'm going to come back to what you're doing at the moment, because I do want to get into the studio in a little bit more. But before we do that, you kind of dropped in at the start. Well, I've got this other thing in Nottingham and, you know, kind of something going on there. But that's kind of uh, quite an interesting thing, too, isn't it? What's happening up in Nottingham? Well, we've got an e-commerce and branding agency in Nottingham. And that was the sort of ignition of my passion for this social media because we looked at our social media and I was like, we should be doing better than this. But then it started like, well, what would happen if you guys do something and I do something? Let's have a race to see who could build more followers in six months. And that's the start of my journey. Obviously, it's slightly more diff. I've learned that it's more difficult to build social media as a brand, as an entity, than it is to build it as a person. So I've learned that. But yeah, I think I've just spent an awful lot more time on my socials than they could ever spend on theirs. Interesting. And for people who haven't seen you on social media, they should go and check it out immediately because before we hit the record button here, just for people watching or listening to us, I was sharing how I watched a lot of your output, a lot of your content, and you really are sharing a lot of gems, a lot of great tips for people. How are you finding that? What's life like in the TikTok world? How, how is it actually working for you? I... um. I think it's brilliant. I, I love it. I mean, because I've got, I've got income floating around. It's not my, I don't have to make money off, off it straight away. That's fine. It will come along later. But I just love when you get a growth spurt of viewers and the, just the comments. TikTok sort of exploded in the summer where well, my TikTok did. And just the comments going, you really helped me. And this one thing has helped my brand and my business. And the more people that you get say those things, the more it spurs me on to do like something different. I want to be, well, I think when I started, I thought the reason for doing it every day, every weekday was like, you know, those desk calendars you get with a little tip or something, a little quote every day. I want to do the same thing, but with tips on how to make better videos and just turn up every day and see what happens. And the magic of it is you learn so much yourself. You learn so much about what you should be like productizing, what, sh what you should be offering to people. And if you turn up to give value, then that's when a loyal fan base starts up. And that's when those interesting things start to happen. So someone who joined the studio only recently just said, I've been following you on TikTok for about six months and I just wanted to work with you. And that was it. But when I, we've spoken to people at Rusty Monkey at my creative agency and we're, we're tendering for work, like you're, you're up against price points and people going, can you give me a quote for X, Y, and Z? 
And it's very different when people know know you or feel like they know you, have that connection over months or years. They suddenly, price falls by the wayside. You just go, I just want to work with you because I know exactly what you stand for and who you are. I think it's just a, a magical place. I mean, there's obviously times when it's been tough or when you go onto YouTube and someone's just going, this dude doesn't know what the F he's talking about. But it makes that bit makes you more resilient because there's more comments in the other way. So as long as you turn up and give value, that's how to win, really. Well, Chris, thank you for sharing that. And as you were talking, it reminded me of, and you said something similar earlier about it's easier to build a personal sort of profile and to build mm. a brand around an individual than it is a company sometimes. And I was thinking immediately of Steve Jobs and Apple or Richard Branson and Virgin. And it, it's the person, isn't it, that's really driving. I think that's what stands out for me when I watch your content as well. And to me, it comes across as a real genuine, I'm here to help. And you were saying about, you know, flipping that sort of desk calendar and there's a little tip every day. Mm. And it it's kind of, the, it's also the kind of content, if you don't mind me saying, where you kind of didn't know you needed some of it until you watch it. And then you go, oh yeah, that's how you do that bit. Oh yeah, yeah. that makes sense. I see that. Oh, that's so simple. I could do that. And that's that's a bit of magic there that would just be so, make such a difference. So I get that comment you got from somebody that joined the studio. Mm. I think I like to surprise people. So often people will turn up and go, oh, here's him teaching some camera tri tricks or whatever. And then the next day it might be something around branding because I'm really excited about the prospect of how people communicate to other people their brand values and what you stand for and how you can actually reach out because i see so many people starting on this social media journey and they do only last a couple of months because they start with what they do and they they can post for a little bit because they can describe what they do over a couple of weeks and then at the end of the couple of weeks they go well i've already told them exactly what our business does what else can i say but if you flip it and come from what do your audience potentially what how could i benefit them then there's endless amounts of things you could say so yeah i like to surprise people and are you are you scripting that out in advance meticulously are you just coming well today I, I might do this tomorrow or are you analyzing the analytics and going well those kind of videos did well i'll do more of those how do you what's the sort of creative process behind what you're working on a little bit of both. I like to, I I have scripted things out for a long time and gone, oh, I've got, I've recorded things and I've got 20 in the bank, so I don't need to worry for another month. But more recently I've gone, well, I'll just stress myself and I'll start a 30 days of something, but I'll only have the first thing written. And I've gone, right, okay, <laughs> by tomorrow I need to have something else. And, but that's worked quite well. It's sort of, it's kept me reasonably sharp, but that that's the the nice thing about it is that none of this really matters. It'll all disappear. You, it, you've got to frame it as an experiment because, well, you're going to have some happy accidents and you're going to do things that aren't going to go well. And if you look at the analytics every single day and you're going, well, that got 300 less views, well, you're not going to get on very well. The things that I found that have worked well is having a laser focus on what people might want and then spreading that out into a series of 30 videos or 50 videos because if people come in at the fifth they know there's 25 more like this to come or they can come in right at the end and binge watch things so that is it's great when i go on to TikTok or Instagram and see people binge watching previous bits of content. And then you'll get a message going, I found your stuff really insightful or really helpful. I've never thought about my business in that way. So, but with that free form nature, I can just watch some YouTube videos and go, think about things in a certain way and go, right, I'm going to do a video. Osh, out it goes. So because the, the TV work isn't nine to five every day, I'll have, pockets of time where I can just do those things. So, yeah. 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 makes sense. And you've mentioned a couple of times about this sort of almost like a hundred day challenge, you know, sorry, a, a year challenge where I'm going to go on and maybe there's a 30 days of challenge. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's a, a series like you're just describing, 
But to do something consistently for a year, is that something that at this point of your experience you'd go everybody should do this it's crazy this makes such a difference because you talked about that sort of explosion or that you know it did happen right it did it did really grow or is it is it platform specific you know you've spent a lot of time on all the platforms i'm sure through your agency work you know reels yeah. shorts tiktok what what are your thoughts on that chris yeah i mean i've i've learned lots of things over the journey and i think everyone should do it not necessarily to get more work. That will that will come if you carry on for a long time. But what you'll get is you get feedback week in, week out by the, the ideas you're putting out there. And you'll go, oh, th this idea for my audience resonates a bit more. And you can start to tailor what you offer to people from that. And like I was, I was saying that, I thought I was just going to spend time with people sorting out their cameras, but it's not that at all. And I only found that out by posting a lot and doing videos that were not related to camera work at all. So you, you will find a lot about your potential audience and about yourself just by posting and reiterating. That's the real thing is watching out for the reactions and reiterating and going again, not putting out the same type of content week in week out and expecting a different result so if you treat it as an experiment it can be hugely powerful yeah the, you, you've sort of emphasized that word experiment and i get that it's such an important point and i, I want to talk about uh, i'm going to throw in a couple of buzzwords but things like authenticity and things like like quality as well not so much a buzzword but does this, you know, if you watch an old cine film of your family that was shot, you know, before we had all the cool tools we have now, the sound and the video quality doesn't seem to matter because it's your family and it's a memory and it's emotional, maybe. And then you've got the other end of the scale, which is, you know, the camera guy at Glastonbury. So, or the big movie studios, for example. But when it comes to this kind of content, do you think that sort of down to earth, genuine approach, is it just about being you? What What's the secret sauce that you've found out through all this work that you've been doing here? Authenticity is the best thing you can do because you're at the end of the day, you're trying to build a connection with the person at the other end. And as you scroll through Instagram, you'll see a million people going, you're doing this wrong. Here's five reasons why you're still bad at this. Here's 10 reasons. And most of the people on there are running ads against those, but they're trying to make you feel awful. And I, I really hate that because when you see people come at it from the other angle and go, I want to build a personal brand. I want to be someone who people go to for this information because I watch people like Simon Sinek or Seth Godin, Rory Sutherland, Daniel Priestley, Vin Zhang, Chris Doe, Jay Klaus, and all those people, no, well, none of those people are going running ads going, basically, you're rubbish. They're all beacons of hope. And I think that's where you need to be. You need to be out there going, I'm giving away all the information. Like you need to give away everything you know, because none of it matters. And people will come come away from your videos going, I wonder how much he doesn't is not saying. But if you give away absolutely everything, just don't worry about like holding anything back. Just give away as much value as possible and you'll gain more followers and money will be a sort of side effect of it at some point. I think that's yeah. that's where I come from. But the but a lot of people are on there to for themselves. They're on on there to get people into a funnel to lock them in, to go down to the next rabbit hole and then spend the $25. I don't want that. I just want to help people. I want to help those million people do better. And it could be that a million people are just getting the free content and a hundred people are in the studio. I'll be happy with that. You know? Yeah. It's that beacon of, as you say, that sort of beacon of hope, that beacon of light, that beacon of support, that beacon of information that people maybe gravitate to. And you mentioned some great people there who are extremely successful, but they also put out good content. And they're not, as you say, 
running ads. I'm sure some of them do, but they're not running ads 24 seven trying to bring you down a funnel. Right. No, so, no, exactly. Yeah. It is slightly more difficult when you're a single person, all those people have got teams behind them, but you can do your little part of that. I think when people notice that you being slightly different and being more authentic, I think that that's a great thing. And with the invention of chat GPT, there's going to be more people asking the same questions of chat GPT to do their scripts for them, for example. Whereas if you come at it from a human level, you'll be the one to stand out. I think you can use AI, but probably you need to try and inject your soul into all of your posts. So use it in a smart way. I love that phrase, inject your soul into all of your posts. That should be on a T-shirt immediately. <laughs> okay. I'm going to use that. It's fine. Yeah, do that, yeah. <laughs> so that brings me nicely back to what we touched on initially, which was the studio. And you you started off saying, look, we were, we were looking at doing something here. But this really has caught on, hasn't it? I know you're, you're helping businesses. I know you're helping people tell better stories. I know there's video element in there, of course. But tell us about the, the, the process leading up to the studio. What were you thinking about? What did you try to create? How is it going? What is it if somebody joins the studio, Chris? Well, initially, I wanted a side hustle. So I was like, I'm going to create a course on telling people how to make their video calls better by having a light and having a nicer camera and a prompter and stuff. And I was going to sell that for $20, $30, 30 pounds, whatever. And then I just realized I, I had no passion for that. I, I really wanted to make a difference in people's businesses. And so I thought my well, community is the way to go. I love the fact that the best parts of my social media is when I'm building community. And can I be closer to more to these people who've got a bit more to spend who want to make a, more of a difference? And can I help them one to one? So inside the studio, there's a variety of people. There's a a personal trainer, sort of fitness coach in Australia. There's a guy who uh, sells business mortgages, who's a mortgage broker. There's a change management guy. But there's everyone's just trying to better the world in a way. And I just, I think there's there's very little support. If you're a smallish business or you're a service-based business and you are on your own, what, how do you get marketing help? How do you brand yourself without going to a big agency and spending a small fortune? You can do it yourself, but you need some help. I think there's so many people out there waiting to take 20, 30,000 pounds off you for a thing, but you're still left with this thing you've got to implement. Whereas I think if you create your own personal brand and put stuff out there with a bit of support and we have a couple of people looking at the numbers or you learning from the mistakes that I've made I think there's really something magical that can happen and the idea of the studio is to try and have a smaller investment but create bigger outcomes the other end yeah and you've had a lot of success here because I, I read with interest you know you've got some people saying, you know, thank goodness, because I got one of the huge leads for my business because I followed some of this stuff or somebody else saying, well, Chris helped me set up my own studio setup. Uh, yeah. And there's kind of that being in that community. There's not just the access to the library and that's important, but there's also access to you, right? And that dedicated sort of hot seat effect where you can get in a discussion with you directly on a particular topic. Am I right in saying that, Chris? Yeah, we we have we have the VIP members have one to one sessions, so I give them one to one help every month, and we have community events where everyone's trying to help everyone else grow, and I'm trying to solve different problems for different people. I thought it might that might not be the case when I started, but everyone just needs a little nudge in different directions, but. If the studio is open and honest, we can all see the little nudges and we can learn from everyone else's mistakes. And that growth will be much faster than without all the other is people. There a, is there a cross-pollination? Because you mentioned, you know, somebody who's a, a fitness 
person maybe trying to build their own brand or their own business and then somebody else in real estate or somebody else running a design agency over here different types of people is there a cross pollination where the tools and the information is helping everybody regardless of where they're coming from or are you finding that the community is also helping the community at this stage because there's maybe certain practices in certain industries that are different yet they can help solve each other's problems how does that work in the the community i think i think 90% of people have the same issues that they are they're coming from their point of view when they're posting rather than from the customer's point of view so we can instantly flip that around and uh, it's it's quite difficult because you get pulled back to what you know and go i sell this no no we need to think about what the customer wants and then try and it's quite it's quite a tricky thing to get around and a lot of people just need that support of someone going you can do it and we just need to put out at least one or two posts a week just to get you up and running because a lot of people sit there and go well i'll only start posting when i've bought that next camera or if, if i've done that next edit 100 percent right but you have to be you have to have that support of good people especially when you don't know if it's good or not and you go the first 100 posts may not be very good and mark in the studio when he started posting his video where he got a 30 grand lead in his first week wasn't especially good but he put him he put himself out there as an authentic person and someone on linkedin was like oh I've, i can really connect with you people aren't expecting it to be like glossy and shiny and i think that was the that was the good thing about it where you just go just just put it out there see what happens and that's that's where my experiments started and i was like i've done I think I did maybe six months before I found my voice on there and I reiterated and changed. And I think I can, I can just help people find their voices much quicker than I took to find mine because now I know what, what actually works. And I know the studio is helping the person's company or business, but there's a heavy emphasis on the personal brand too. And we sort of touched on that earlier, didn't we? And do you find that that's a different approach coming to it? Because everybody, to some degree, you mentioned, you know, you're scrolling through Instagram or TikTok or whatever. It's as though everybody wants to be a content creator, but there's so, so much noise out there. Do you find that you have to come at this from a, a slightly different angle or perspective to get under the skin of what does it mean to actually build a personal brand that, that actually delivers a result? Because... Mm -hmm. Most people can pick up a smartphone these days and shoot a video, right? It doesn't yeah. necessarily get them anywhere. No, but the, most people, when they shoot, are coming at it from the wrong wrong angle. Really, we're trying to make friends, and that's it. People will buy people buy from other people who feel like them, and we all see it in business where you go, "Oh, I want to, I want so and so to quote because he's just a mate," and. And when they move businesses, the business moves with them because there's that connection. And we can do that through personal brands. We have to do that through personal brands because we're not going to have a deep connection to Tesco, Tesco's Twitter account. And we've, I think that's the power of the personal brand. You can say stuff that your, your business brand can't say. You can be confrontational if you want. You can do different things i think that's where the power is because you can swear if you want to you could be the sweary accountant and that would be a good thing that would drive some people away and bring some people towards you so i think there's there's a lot of freedom in having a personal brand and not trying to put a shiny sort of plastic version of yourself on screen i couldn't i couldn't agree more yeah i love that thanks for sharing those insights as you look forward then you know, and you, you're progressing with, obviously, you've still got the agency work going strong, but you've got the, the camera work that you do, and you obviously love and have a passion for video. And, of course, the studio now, another another string to the bow. When you think about planning, Chris, and you think about, well, what do I want to do over the next six months, 12 months, 24 months? 
How does it work in your world now? You know, you have multiple income streams, you're building different communities. What are you thinking about? What's keeping you up at night? How are you planning? How does that work in your world? I think my focus is in, is trying to get as much value for the people in the studio as possible. And I'm trying not to build it too quickly so everyone in there gets value. So it's going to be capped. The, the membership's going to be capped. I haven't quite decided on the cap yet, but I just want it to be to remain authentic. And I also want to continue the social media journey where I'm trying to help other people. I, I mean, it sounds a bit soppy, but a lot of this came from I've got a daughter, she's seven, and I found that if I needed if I had the money to take her on holiday, then it would mean I wouldn't see her that often because I'd be working. So I was exchanging time for money. And I just want to take that away from as many people as possible. Give people that value. And I hopefully in the next couple of years, that will be rewarded. But I think I just, I'm just trying to concentrate on giving that value over the next couple of years and see what happens. It's still an experiment. And I think Having such a rigid plan of going, well, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z in, in the next nine months, 12 months, I think that's bad for me. I just want to be able to be fluid and agile because you can only do that when you're a small sort of fish. And I, I want to stay like that for a little bit longer. I love that. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. And there's something about that agility that, and also that capping, you know, it's, a, it's unusual to hear somebody saying that, you know, but... I understand about keeping that sort of magic alive in there by capping the community, by making it a little bit exclusive, by making sure it doesn't get too big, too unwieldy and lose some of that secret magic that's going on in there. I, I get that. And also, I, I think the not too prescriptive on the planning, you know, in terms of what you're saying, that because you can sort of be agile, can't you? You can think about new things. You can go slightly off in a different direction. Uh, and I love that. And of course, the final thing that really struck with me that you were saying there was empowering other people is always a good place to start. And I think through the work that you're doing, you're certainly doing that in spades and it's paying off for people. And you can see that and the comments are showing that. And that's such a really powerful thing to do, isn't it? Because ultimately you're helping people. Yeah. And it makes you feel, it makes you feel good because when I do TV work, it's very remote and you only, you sort of see a few glimmers of what people think on YouTube comments of stuff from Glastonbury, but this, all this social media stuff and the stuff in the studio is so immediate that you go, this person's earned more money. This, this person could probably take another week's holiday. Well, that's amazing for me. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Look, finally, before we run out of time, Chris, is there anything else that you want to share with our international audience today? It could be something we've touched on already that you want to expand on or something completely left field that we haven't mentioned. So really your parting thoughts for our audience. And secondly, and importantly, if people want to reach out and connect with you, get in touch with you, join the studio while they can, where's the best place to point people to? Well, I think as a leaving thing, I would just try and emphasise the fact that if you come at social media from the viewer's perspective and you just effing do it, just post, post as much as you can, because that's the one thing that's going to improve your life. I, th I, do, I know it's a big claim, but I do really believe it because the more you put out there, the more you're going to learn about yourself and the quicker you're going to grow. None of this is overnight. And I think there's lot, there's too many people out there trying to flog you a solution which is overnight, they, all the viral trends. But if you did it in an organic way where you are that beacon of hope, I think that's a really good place to start. And if you want to find me and see if I'm that beacon for you, you could go to Instagram on there. I'm the Chris Gore, G-O-O-R, and the same on uh, TikTok. I'm on everywhere else, but you could just Google me for there. And if you want more details on the studio, head to uh, brandvideo.pro. There you go. Lots of places for Chris. He's not that hard to track down online. He's, he's in a lot of different places. But I do encourage people to go and check out the great work that 
Chris is doing, if you're not following on social media and you're looking to improve your personal brand or your business and your video, you should be following him. So I encourage people to go and do that. Look, that brings us really nicely, Chris, to the end of our discussion today here on The Global Discussion. I want to thank everybody who's watching, listening to us around the world and to make sure that they follow, like, subscribe, do everything that I need them to do to help support the show. As I say, go and check out everything and all the great work that Chris is doing. I certainly recommend that strongly. And hopefully they'll join me back here for some more discussions with creatives and leaders and thinkers just like Chris. But thanks for being on the show, Chris. It's been a pleasure to talk to you again today. My pleasure.